social engineering. Perhaps there is a racial component involved. Some groups who claim to be the most tolerant are for clustering minorities into low-income communities where there is where is their opportunity for advancement? Social justice. What is social justice? A redistribution of property and income. Our property values have declined. I've been a resident of New Jersey for 38 years, almost 39 years. Property taxes have gone up every year. Now our property taxes are, our property value has declined to such a low place that it's depressing. The state is taking our property. What about the farmers? They're losing their land to preservation, conservation, yet they're still being required to pay taxes on it. With all the regulations and compliance issues coming from the EPA, there's little chance for opportunity. In the name of environmental justice and social justice, our liberty and property are disappearing. Please revise the plan. And one last point, I just heard this amazing quote, which is not original, but uh, made by um, President John F. Kennedy. The rights of man come not from the generosity of the state, but from the hand of God. Amen. We need to remember that. When we get in a room and we're all planning, we need to remember where our rights come from. Mm -hmm. And don't take those rights. Don't let anybody take those rights. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Jim Pitzel. Um, I'm trying my best here. Uh, Arrow Blue. Jim H I T Z E L. Anyone close to that? <laughs> okay. We'll, we'll, we'll call. Um, we'll I'll call take his time you. later. <laughs> um, Janet Feely. Hi, I'm from uh, Woodbridge. Um, I just had a few things to say. Um, the plan seems to be uh, based on two major assumptions um, uh, that, you know, the sustain sustainability part, which is based on global warming and also rapid growth in cities, um, which according to the IRS, um, that we have a net loss of 331,000 people in New Jersey. So um, it seems like we're pushing plans on, you know, these major assumptions that, you know, we don't even know if they're true or not. Um, and also, it's, it references the needs of the state lot and uh, it doesn't recognize uh, individual property owners and uh, also I'd like to know um, well I guess the planners are the ones who drafted all the you know the whole plan up is that who was there any input from any citizens or anything or <coughs> there was um, I think there's more meetings that are needed and uh, also, um, the uh, the main thing was the uh, the fact that I'm sorry for <laughs> that uh, you know the property owner rights are not uh, protected. I don't think in the plan, and that's like my major concern. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you. Alex Danbach. Hi, uh, my name is Alex Danbach. I'm the uh, director of planning for the city of East Orange. Um, I also happen to be a homeowner living right here in Newark. Um, actually, I'm going to be moving into East Orange soon and buying a house there. Um, and one of the things that I wanted to comment on is that this plan, um, while I agree that the devil is in the details, um, and the details are important to, to ensure that the plan moves ahead in the direction that it is going in, I actually am supportive of the direction that the plan is going in and uh, want, to reckon, want the uh, folks reviewing the comments to recognize that um, not everybody in New Jersey lives the same way or wants to live the same way. Um, there, are, um, there is a lot of desire to live in a more rural area or a more rural lifestyle. There are many who live, who actually crave and seek and desire to live in urban areas and in urban settings, and you can see the property 
property values reflected in places like Loboken, New Jersey City, and even here in Newark. Uh, even my neighborhood where I bought my house, um, my neighbor, uh, my values actually are doing quite nicely. And uh, there's a lot of demand in neighborhoods here in Newark and in, uh, and in East Orange, uh, where we're now working on several new projects that are uh, attracting new residents into that city, uh, and, uh, new residents who have a choice of where they can live, because they can afford to live anywhere. Um, and it's very important to recognize that the plan should recognize that urban areas are desirable places to live for many reasons. One, they are, uh, they make more efficient use of existing infrastructure, uh, infrastructure that was already built and is uh, generally in good working order that needs to continue to be used and is always going to be with us and is always going to have to be maintained because there will always be people in the urban parts of the state. Um, so to continue to uh, fully uh, use and uh, maximize the use of that urban infrastructure is smart. Uh, while recognizing that there are people who will desire to, and there are certain types of businesses that should go to more rural and more suburban areas, the plan does need to accommodate that as well. But I, th I commend the fact that the plan, this plan, as previous editions of the state plan, and of course we've had a state plan for many years, continue to support development of urban areas, and that is important. Remember, Essex County has over 700,000 people. And Essex County, which includes, of course, Newark, East Orange, uh, South Orange, Montclair, um, those are all areas that are range from very urban to urban-suburban. And um, that is a major component of this population. Uh, there are many different, it's a bit, New Jersey is an extremely diverse state, and it's important that the plan move towards supporting the needs and desires of the many different types of people in the state. One other thing to remember is that the younger generation tends to favor more urban lifestyles and more urban types of housing, the vibrancy, the lifestyles of lofts, things of that sort. And obviously we're writing a plan, meaning that we're planning for the future. And so we need to think about what the current trends are in housing and design accordingly. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, Jennifer Coffey. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I'm Jennifer Coffey. I'm the policy director for the Stony Brook Millstone Watershed Association.